Hello everyone, the story you're about to hear is part 1 and part 2 of the last obelisk. We hope you enjoy. The last obelisk. I should really not divulge this information since there are harsh consequences for breaking the non-disclosure agreement, but I just can't leave you without an explanation. You are my family and I can't imagine the grief and stress you guys went through after my sudden disappearance. Therefore, I will explain my motives for why I did so. Even if, by doing it, I risk great consequences, I will be truly transparent. I owe you that. But before anything, I want you guys to stop worrying. I am healthy, in good hands, and yes, finally employed in my field as an Egyptologist. Indeed, after all the intellectual struggles, financial hardships and emotional breakdowns, I have finally made it to the top. You will be proud. I am now part of a very important project, if not the most important our civilization has ever undertaken. I mean, it will be the largest structure mankind has ever witnessed, and, once it is completed, a sign of unity of all people. Such a shame that it is kept secret. Hence, please, don't worry if you have never heard about the last pillar. It is to be expected. Nonetheless, as its completion nears the deadline, you will witness its extravagant grandeur in a couple of years at the latest. So, how did I get here? Yes, I know it is quite difficult to believe that this world would ever need an Egyptologist specialized in early dynastic culture and hieroglyphics. Yet, it was for my expertise in the latter that, a couple of weeks ago, out of nowhere, I received the proposal of employment from a rather good-looking woman. Indeed, it was outside of the university library that she and her associates awaited my exit, knowing who I was. They were interested in the extent of my academic accomplishments. After confirming my credentials and understandings of the subject, they offered me on the spot a job. The opportunity of a lifetime. Without ever introducing herself, she vaguely explained the tasks I would be performing and, when I hesitated, she offered an astronomical sum of money, of which an advance equivalent to one year would be paid in full the same evening if only I signed the contract. Eventually, I could not refuse such an offer, a sign without knowing the specificities nor the location, yet fully accepting the constraints. The benefits were great, the salary astronomical. Of course, there was a catch. I was part of a strictly confidential project, one that required my expertise and above all, my entire discretion. No one would, nor should, know about my whereabouts, not even my closest family, especially when the consequences for breaking the secret are dire. Obviously, the moment I agreed, I had to disappear, until the completion of the project. So, I did. The next morning, I was on my way to the closest international airport, 
with no passport, yet a one-way ticket to Mongolia in business class. All was paid in advance, my plane ticket, my meals, even the accommodation would be provided at the site. I know it is weird. What would an Egyptologist do in Mongolia? I guess as much as a raccoon in the ocean. Yet, it was an offer I could not refuse. So I ignored the rational doubts. Since I did just wipe out all of my crippling student loan debt. Now, here I am. Part of a never-sleeping construction site at the heart of the Gobi Desert, engaged in the erection of a colossal monument, one that defies rationality, logic, and even seems to challenge God himself. For a task of this magnitude is nor conceivable by reason, faith, nor economics. Yet, day and night, cutting-edge technology and brute labor are shaping this ornament stone soon to be supreme obelisk. A structure made out of a single gigantic granite block taken out of the heart of an inactive volcano before it was brought here. It is in betwixt the dunes of the Gobi that this heterogeneous in color granite is being endlessly polished, carved and shaped to perfection. I just can't imagine the resources that are put into this. They really have to be endless, just the stone alone weighs over 830 million metric tons and it is yet to be erected. Enough spoiling, as the deadline is nearing, you will have to admire the monument once it is completed. Now, let me walk you through my tasks and responsibilities at the construction site. So, as a hieroglyph specialist, I am in charge of the correct carving of the message that will be displayed on the west face of the monolith. In other words, I am mostly in charge of supervising the faithful execution of early dynastic hieroglyphs and representations. It is a precise job that takes into account sacred proportions and precise ratios that have been used in the early dynastic times, 6,000 years ago. A time that is scarcely known as the time where the gods ruled Egypt. Sorry for getting off track. I will try not to bore you with specificities about ancient history, especially after you believed that I was kidnapped or dead. Back to my job description. Curiously, the guidelines are very, but very precise, yet the implementation is a challenging task. Since the message displayed in hieroglyphics on the obelisk is pure gibberish, it does not make any sense. The sentences are sporadic, illogical, sometimes even comical and improvised. Yet the implementation of the guidelines is pure precision, so there is a lot of double checking to confirm I am on the right. In other words, I have to make sure that the hieroglyphs meet the standards of form and depth in the message and shape. To end this letter, I want you to know that this success owes entirely to your support, and I hope you can forgive me for leaving without any word. But please understand. It was the opportunity of a lifetime.
end. I am happy now. For obvious reasons, please don't tell anyone I have contacted you and don't try to contact me. I promise to keep you updated. For now, I don't want this letter to be too long, but I will write to you as soon as possible with interesting details of my new life in the Gobi. Hope to see you soon. Once the obelisk is completed, as the contract binds me to stay until it is erected. Peace. Hi there. Just a small update. So, after working for over a month here, I have yet to truly realize how this project really spares no expense. From just observing the state of the art equipment and machinery used to, with the highest level of precision, carve, polish and cut the obelisk from that mammoth granite stone, large enough to belittle any modern skyscraper. I am surprised that this project was ever conceived and I wonder what its true purpose is. Just the logistics and economics involved in sustaining an improvised town of around 5,000 workers in the middle of this inhospitable desert is just insane. The costs of operation are probably in the billions and the total cost is around the trillion dollars. I still can't figure out how that colossal stone was brought here in the first place. This is really mind-boggling and jaw-dropping. How? This was not on the news. Someone had to notice a stone the size of a large mountain being transported. To be clear, when I arrived at the site, the construction was already ongoing. The first day, I had a meeting with the chief architect of the project, who explained that I will be replacing their last Egyptologist, who felt sick and had to abandon the site for obvious medical reasons. He also explained that this structure would be used to unite humanity in some way, but that I should not look too much into it, since it is not my job. How does an extravagant obelisk unite humanity, you tell me, since there are hundreds of such structures around the world? Yes. Yes, a lot smaller, but nonetheless erected, all from their native Heliopolis to distant Buenos Aires, passing through Rome, Paris, and Washington. It is really hard to believe this one, if erected, will lead to world peace. As the lead architect Anebos suggested, he said that the obelisk will represent the greatest triumph accomplished and it will be after that when the world will have been reshaped. Even if it is possible to erect a 1.5 kilometer single stone, the monolith is covered partly in massive and solid gold and silver plates, which just add to the incomprehensible weight. By the way, did you know that those metals were believed to be the skin and bones of the pharaoh? Gods among men, reincarnations of Ra. Anyways, I don't even know if it is possible to erect the last pillar as it is named. Just the sheer weight of the monument. Yet, I've overheard some engineers saying that they will use several space rockets to propulsate and erect the obelisk crazy stuff, but not as crazy as the message. 
I am in charge of overseeing. Nothing makes any sense. It is truly a cacophony of meaningless hieroglyphs that I have to fully and precisely replicate on the enormous, polished, to precision stone. Even the only image carved is out of place, since it depicts the high priest bowing to a much smaller sized pharaoh. That also does not follow any ancient Egyptian iconography rationale, since the size of the representation was a symbol of its power and authority. The priests should be smaller. I don't know who comes up with these ideas. Anyways, I was just exposing my wanderings. Since I have not much to do in the desert, besides working, so who do you think pays the bills for this project and why? Why is it being built with such precision and under such strict secrecy? For now, I guess I should not overthink it. Hope this message keeps you updated. Happy holidays. Hope to see you soon. I just discovered why I was invited to join the construction at such a late stage. I am really the replacement of the previous Egyptologue. It is just that he did not leave the country because of health problems. He actually left this world. Just over three months ago, he took his own life. The poor devil was found hanging from one of the hundreds of cranes present on this complex. From what the foreman told me, he had a strange hieroglyph painted on the back of his wind parka. I researched it and found out that it was the high hieroglyph of Ra. Yes, it is truly unfortunate and bizarre. Yet, I am to discover what was the meaning of the message and his mysterious suicide. Apparently, he could not handle the constant isolation after working here for over 8 years. This is getting eerie. Yet, I am sure it has something to do with the encrypted message of the obelisk. Yes, believe me. I know it is not just a bunch of random hieroglyphics. They have to mean something important. Something that for some reason is being kept secret or hidden in plain sight. Anyways, I still have at least two years to figure it out until the completion of the task. At least that's what Anebos keeps telling me. Now that I think about it, he is a pretty weird guy. It is not just his elongated skull, we all have defects, but his queer, frail, pale body that is always in constant need of support of a cane that tips me off. Yet, it is not just him displaying these bizarre traits. Other characters, architects, and engineers appear from time to time to control the advancements of the construction and the quality of the work. All really weird guys. They speak with each other in some guttural tongue. I am yet to identify it but it might be some sort of an old Semitic dialect. Besides, the weird shared tongue. 
They gather in flocks at the darkest nights and under the cover of the lone and large tent of the head architect. Chant and scream, cry and moan. It is sometimes even possible to see their macabre shadows dancing to strange rhythms and deep chants. No one appears to mind it, since we get paid a lot. I mean a lot. But it is starting to get uncomfortable. I can barely sleep at night. I feel the need to know what the hell is happening here. Why are we building this extreme monument? <laughs> Who is paying for this? What is the message and the meaning of all these strange sentences in early dynastic hieroglyphs? Let's change the subject. Anebos told me that I am doing a great job and that I shouldn't worry too much. So I got a raise. He also told me that at this space we will complete the last pillar in less than two years, which will be crucial in the new age to come. I asked him why. He then said that the monument will be the cornerstone of a new age, an age of sustainability, resilience, and inclusion. That is all. For now, I will try to get some sleep. Don't worry. I am probably overthinking stuff. See you soon. Post scriptum. Oh my god, I think I stumbled upon a clue. I can confirm that the gibberish on the monolith is actually a coded message, and I think I found the key to it. So, I was strolling through the site when it struck me, Ra, the sun god, and the obelisk, which was for the ancient Egyptians a petrified sun ray. Yes. I know where to start searching. I can't wait for the morning. Since the true message is found on what will be the west and east side of the obelisk, once it is erected, then the hieroglyphs will be read following the sun. From the bottom of the east side, mounting each hieroglyph to the bottom of the west side, all following the movement of the sun, I just need to get a hold of the plans of the erection and completion of this megalithic obelisk. I will get to the bottom of this. I have finally decoded the last pillar. It makes all sense now. In some horrifying way. The obelisk. The money, the location, all come together on their one purpose. Furthermore, the hieroglyphs have revealed that dark truth. I just hope I'm wrong. I wish I misread, misinterpreted. And this will not be the last obelisk, since once finished, this megalithic stone will be erected as a monument to the triumph of the Messiah, the lost Pharaoh, descendant of Ra, over darkness. He who will be back to unite humans under one divine authority. The message is clear. It is after years of devastating wars plagues and deaths, where people will die in the billions, that the last conqueror 
will surge and lead the good side to victory. Is it all coded in the obelisk? Or is it actually just the language of an era to come? The new and undefined tongue. Eventually, I could have just settled with this disturbing information, yet something felt even more wrong, and I continued my investigation. It was that gold and silver plated portrayal of the pharaoh and his high priests that made me question the message. Yes, this is also a lie, but reserved to the generation that will shortly replace us. The truth is even darker. The obelisk symbolizes the final and definitive triumph of an elusive race of priests over the mind of men. They, after defiling the gods themselves, defeating the true pharaohs, invented new beliefs, new systems based on faith alone, destined to be consumed by the masses. After gaining our trust and engineering our reality meticulously and insidiously like a spider knitting a deadly web, they fed belief after belief to the people. Democracy, finance, science, morals and religion. All an illusion to lead humankind to this moment, the Great Reset and the Great Holocaust, the Great Sacrifice of Humans, a ritual they reserved to their darkest God, all done to seal the legitimacy of the age to come. They already control all of the world's resources. Just look around the world. Each obelisk erected was just the proof of conquest of a country, of a geographical area in the world. The obelisks, who are ancient Egyptian monuments, are featured in a bizarre and out of place way in all the world's capitals. Moreover, this one will be no different. It is in this desert that the new capital of mankind will arise from the sands around the last obelisk. A city built with slaves, labor, and upon the bodies of millions. Since they already controlled the world, they could have already put in charge their puppet messiah. But I guess they are a little superstitious. Their esoteric god must be satisfied. For them, our lives are meaningless. We are just cattle guided to the slaughterhouse by their lies and deceptions. It really is difficult to continue to live with such knowledge, being aware that we as individuals are so small and we can't even resist. We have already lost. The, the war is lost. No. What am I saying? I won't let you guys suffer. No. I know what to do to buy you some time. A lot of time. Enough to stop their plans. I am going out in a boom <laughs> to think 
that they were so arrogant to leave clues in plain sight to mock the human race to belittle me in my intelligence and believe it will pass unpunished the last obelisk will be their first mistake the first step to their extinction and it will crumble to dust like their lies deceptions and their power over our minds I will leave you for good and I trust you will do the impossible to stop the next obelisk and beat these fanatics if they could not win in 6,000 years they just won't there was never a night or a problem that could defeat sunrise or hope thank you for watching and remember sleep with one eye open